Hello everyone. So as ever, I've just been asked to spontaneously <coughs> sit down and make a video for you all and uh, I have no idea what the message is that's going to come through today but I've been asked to sit and just tune in and open to channel. So I'm just going to invite you to join me <laughs> as I tune in. Curiously, my mind emptied of all question uh, and entering kind of a nothingness or a, a, a kind of playful curiosity I suppose as to what the message might be at this moment and I love doing this when I open to channel because sometimes I will have an idea of uh, what is at play, what is coming up in terms of themes in the collective and there are certain things that have been kicking around in my mind but the um, yeah, the message here is really just to, um, yeah, just let the guides come forward, let the higher self, always the higher self first, um, but just be open, be curious, sink into the void and allow whatever needs to come to come. And so we're just going to close our eyes and... Uh, just going to close our eyes and get comfortable. If you need to fidget a little bit, make sure you're nice and comfy, feet flat on the floor, and just starting to settle into the body. <laughs> and the body is really where the message feels like it's going today. Starting to breathe into the body. And the first thing that is being brought to my attention and that we're asked to tune into is the sensations of the body, the physical sensations of the body, and really tuning into those physical sensations. And for those of you who are sensitive, like myself, you may be aware that in recent years, the physical sensations in your body have become a lot more heightened and your ability to pick up on subtle energies and vibrations is becoming a lot more physical. And the impression that I'm picking up around this and, you know, that I, I guess myself included and many of my clients have had in uh, in recent years and, and indeed over the last decade at least is that some of these physical sensations are things that people are going to doctors about and asking for medical assistance and doctors are actually baffled and scratching their heads because there's no, um, no pathogen or no physical issue at play but the, the uh, symptoms that many people are experiencing and describing is existing on an etheric or an energetic or an astral level and yet the symptoms are very very real they're very physical they're very tangible and this is something that we are relearning as a humanity how to tap into and how to interpret and indeed how to heal and a lot of the symptoms behind things such as autoimmune conditions and things that modern medicine cannot explain are actually happening uh, within the etheric structures of our bodies and some symptoms are even coming from timeline bleed-throughs, past lives, um, some of them coming from um, generational traumas and things passed down and those of us who are working in the energetic sphere know these all too well this is not new information but the thing that I'm being asked to focus on today is how incredibly tangible energy is becoming for those of us who are sensitive and who have been honing our sensitivity for some time and the guides are saying, you know, this is where the non-real is becoming a lot more real. The non-physical is becoming a lot more physical. And as the veils drop away, the spiritual becomes tangible. And for those of you who have basically been for a long time treated like you were just imagining things or you were making them up or... You are, you know, I've had the 
the eye rolling, people eye rolling, or here they go again, this is confirmation that what you are experiencing, much of what you are experiencing is very real. It just depends on what timeline and in what dimension and in what what reality you're experiencing it, it in. But we're learning to discern now between realities and there's a convergence of realities happening. So the multidimensional is coming into our unified field of oneness and we're experiencing many dimensions and many timelines at once here in what we call um, our 3D world. There, it, The 3D world is becoming the multidimensional world world and it's all converging and this is what we call the ascension what we call the quickening what we call the awakening again i'm getting confirmation through that many of us who've known this for a long time many of the mystics and the seers and the healers are going to start to um, be called upon to support the newly awakened so people who are only just starting to go through their spiritual awakening or their consciousness awakening um, it doesn't have to be called spiritual it's just a level of awareness although we know it to be an awareness of spirit but some of this plays out for different people in different vocabulary different language sometimes it's just an awareness of different thoughts and feelings sometimes it's literally just a self-awareness and a taking ownership of one's responsibility for one's behaviors and and what one is manifesting in one's life um, so the vocabulary around it isn't important I use a certain spiritual vocabulary um, my husband, for example, who's a very earthly Capricorn, would use a different vocabulary. And there's appears to be now a kind of a meeting of understanding that goes beyond vocabulary and goes beyond the, the words that we use, this inner kind of internal knowing, this inner, un, this inner, people, a lot of pe people say inner standing. I've never really liked, loved that word. It's not really my favorite word. Understanding, inner standing overstanding <laughs> um, and it's like an energetic resonance it's almost like we can understand each other we can feel each other we can tune into each other without the need to use the same vocabulary and without the need to use the same words um, to articulate what is going on you can have a meeting of minds a meeting of souls a meeting of bodies you'll know it as a frequency when you're in the presence of somebody who has a resonance with you, you'll just want to be in their company. You, you know, you won't have to put a label on it. You'll just know that you feel at home in their, in their energy field and in their vibration. And more and more of these kind of soul connections are happening and you pick it up in your body. And the body consciousness really is the, uh, the essence of the consciousness that is coming through here for me today. My body consciousness wants to speak. And as I tune into my body consciousness, she's telling me that she's one with the body of the earth and the one with the body of all bodies. And that in truth, all body consciousnesses are connected. And this is why when healers and um, alchemists, um, spiritualists, uh, those of us who can assist and facilitate with healing work, this is why we're often able to mirror uh, what's going on in our with our client in our own body. So oftentimes if my client is experiencing a physical symptom or an energetic symptom, I'll feel the symptom in my body and I'll know there's a mirroring while I'm working in session. And this is becoming more and more heightened in general, in terms of the collective, and the more that you open to this sensitivity and learn how to navigate it, the more you're actually going to be picking up on what's happening in the collective as a whole. But what my body consciousness is saying to me now is that Gaia is speaking through our bodies. Gaia is offering us um, an example of how she's feeling, of how she's been feeling, and so that we uh, can each start to acknowledge our responsibility, uh, the responsibility that we have for the earth. And we know that the indigenous for eons have had a, a fundamental connection to Mother Earth. Um, 
and have seen her as one with their own body, their own being, and the harm that we do to the earth, we do to ourselves and vice versa. There's also an important message coming through around the difference between responsibility and blame. And there are a few other agendas going on in terms of um, what's happening to Mother Earth and uh, you know climate change and so on and so forth. And I'm not going to go down any rabbit holes here. I'll leave that up to you to decide what resonates with you and what doesn't. However, the key point here is around discerning between responsibility and co-creation as opposed to taking on blame and guilt and shame around what is happening or has happened to the earth. Essentially, we're feeling Mother Earth's growing pains and we're feeling our own growing pains through our own physicality, our own bodies and our own form. We're feeling the stretching and the expansion of the earth as a whole and of the consciousness of earth, humanity, the plants, the animals, all the kingdoms of the earth and the realms beyond and the convergence is happening within and without. And our bodies are, I guess, kind of like the um, uh, the gauge or the, the rudder of how we can navigate through this, our physical sensations. And when we learn to really listen to the body, we can follow the thread. And when I teach channeling, I actually do teach how to channel your physical body, how to talk to the body, how to, if you have an ache or a pain, how to tune into that, really listen to what it's saying and relay the message back so that you get the blessing in the situation. And whenever we have an illness or uh, an issue, physically, it is possible to tap into it and glean the blessing from it. So I'm being asked just to tune into the sensations that my physical body is giving me and to relay the message of the body. And uh, I've done this live on camera before, except in a workshop, but we'll see where we go. Um, But also to talk about what is happening with uh, Mother Earth through our bodies because mother earth is gifting us with information and she as she grows and expands we grow and expand uh, energetically in our wisdom in our knowledge in our in our reconnection so the first thing that i'm being made aware of is a pulse at the um coccyx at the tailbone and i am actually feeling a a, a pulsing energy Um, which I'm being told is akin to the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Some may call it the Schumann resonance. But this pulsing of energy as I tune into it, initially it feels like a discomfort. Initially it's a bit like, oh, this feels, this is new, this is unusual, this is not comfortable. But when I actually let go and tune into the energy of it, it starts to become quite a comforting feeling. It's as though something's being gifted to me and the energy moves up and out, a bit like the tree of life analogy. It's energy moving up and through and connecting and then kind of showering down. And it's a flow of what the guides are saying is the matrix of creation. It is the creation energy. And we're being fed and fueled by this creation energy all the time by Mother Earth, but what's happened with this is uh, they're saying the rhythm of it has become faster, more potent, more powerful, and more insistent. So we're being fed more and more information, more and more rapidly, which is part of the quickening. The vibration of the Earth is increasing, therefore our vibration is increasing, and this is how she's assisting us in our awakening, our ascension, our quickening, and we're assisting her. And what our bodies are doing are acting like a channel. So the information from Gaia is feeding up through our central channel all the way up to source, connecting with source light. That frequency is being received by source and then fed back down around and through our energy field back to Gaia. 
in the oneness, in the flow of that beautiful source, divine energy. And this is so nourishing and this is really the core of healing. It's that unconditional love, quantum flow of energy which feeds us and keeps us connected at all times. And this is a really simple practice that you can do for self-healing is just to put your attention on this, that you're always being fed with divine love energy, with vital life force energy. And the more that you put your attention and the focus on it, uh, the more you're going to receive, but it's also knowing that it's strengthening the earth. The more you put your focus on it, the more you're helping to heal the earth, your body, and um, it really is strengthening your etheric field. Now, when you have a strong etheric field, it's like the scaffolding of your physical body is being healed, being strengthened. Um, and Mother Earth is saying, you know, you don't need to change your diet. You don't need to do anything different necessarily. This energy is going to help heal up any holes in the etheric field. It's going to nourish you from within your uh, your knowledge of this, your awareness of this, your ability to connect above and below will actually strengthen you. Um, one of the things that my guide team are chiming in here as well, and they're saying that this simple practice, and you can put yourself in like an egg shape, so you bring the energy up your central channel and then you create it like a, a shield or an egg down around you, or you can think of that donut, that um, tube torus flow of energy. And if you just keep that going, it creates a divine circuit. So from the core of Mother Earth up to source, all the way down around you. I did write about it in the Archangel Alchemy book as well. And I'm not the only one using a similar circuit to this, by the way. But what they're saying is this flow of energy also helps to neutralize the negative impact of dirty technology and technologies that are coming in that are not maybe not so good for our bodies. So if we think about the negative effects of EMF, of you know, um, even having lots of electrical equipment around you, even things like pollution and, and things like that, technologies, um, chemicals, toxins, they can all have a weakening effect on our etheric body. But when we sit and we, we do the flow of energy, what we're asking for is to heal and repair ourselves and the earth and strengthen our energetic matrix, the, the, the framework, through the pattern of creation. There's nothing more powerful than the divine itself. And this acts also as a shield, as a protection, a neutralizing agent. Um, and I'm also being reminded of the beautiful crystal shungite. Shungite has that same neutralizing effect, but this practice will help to neutralize anything in the energy field. And as I tune in with um, my body sensitivity now, that that discomfort in the base chakra has completely cleared, and I'm just feeling a lovely flow of energy up the spine, really opening and it opens all the channels and and now it's coming up into the brain and into the mind and I feel a fundamental stress release you know even without thinking about this emptying the mind of all thought even without thinking about what I've been worried about my brain has already relaxed and now if I do put my focus on something that maybe was causing me I don't know, a little bit of stress or, you know, we all have daily stuff and work stuff and deadlines and things like that to me. Anything that was causing me an issue is not even a bother. It's like it's all cool. It'll all sort itself out. So we're really being shown how simple it is to come into divine warrior training just to get grounded, get in your body, feel your body. Don't resist the sensations the body is showing you. If it's a pain or a discomfort, even an illness, ask the body, what are you showing me? What are you teaching me? Where are you guiding me? Okay, so that flow of energy is going. Mind feels so much more relaxed. And it was only yesterday I was feeling like a sort of a blocking energy around the mind. Now, the other thing that I'm being shown here, which is, Tapping into a little bit of a, a gender type thing is that the guides are calling this mind limitation, mind limitation, which is coming in through technology and it's coming in through the ethers. 
it is coming in through Wi-Fi, through frequency, the information stuff that's percolating around us all the time. We're constantly being barraged and hit by other people's thoughts, feelings, ideas. There's scientific studies done on this stuff, so we know that we can pick up on stuff in the quantum realm. And what this is also doing is neutralizing any of that information coming in, anything that's trying to influence you through your subconscious, even sound, advertising, symbolism, seeing symbolism, misuse of symbolism um, coming in can um, impact our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs. So if you suddenly feel, oh, I feel really depressed and I don't know why, I always question that. I always go, right, well, you know, I don't suppress the emotion. I ask, where is this coming from? Is this mine? Um, what is this showing me? There's always something to learn. It will always teach you. It, your your body will always teach you. But as I do this again, do this flow of the tube Taurus energy, I feel like anything coming in is being just neutralized, transmuted back into unconditional love and released. Now the, uh, the energy around me as I tune into that that beautiful flow of energy is doing a like a, a loop the loop like a crossover and many of you will be familiar with those two spheres crossing to form the um, that vesica pisces shape which is kind of like the shape of our eye or our mouth on the side it's like an almond shape and this is forming a beautiful almond shaped um kind of like a shield or a cocoon around me and again I just feel the flow of energy coming down around and but crossing over and creating this beautiful um these concentric rings just flowing around um and I suppose you could call it like a centrifugal force and it's a neutralizing energy and if we were to join the top of the Vesca Pisces to the sides and down, it would form a diamond shape. So you've got the feminine Vesca Pisces um, and the masculine diamond shape. And I always make that 3D and turn it into an octahedral diamond with, you know, one point above and one point below. And I call this the diamond shield. And again, I've written about this in the Archangel Alchemy Healing Book, and you'll learn all about the mathematics in that. But essentially... The core of the mathematics of these symbols is something we call the golden mean or the divine proportion, um, the divine ratio, and the basis of it is in the Fibonacci sequence. There's tons and tons and tons of information about this mathematics, and it's the patterns of nature. The ratio of our hand to our arm, it's in our face, you know, um, some, you know, some of us have slight variations on it, but essentially it's the pattern of divine creation um, in our world. And it is the mathematics of unconditional love. Um, I'm just being asked to say something about this symbolism. I love how they get me to talk about topics that have kind of been kicking around in my mind, but um, I haven't actually... Um, been able to articulate this symbolism any symbolism that incorporates the patterns of nature the golden mean um or essentially we know it as phi phi uh, is essentially the mathematics of unconditional divine love and unconditional love as opposed to sort of compassionate human love unconditional love is neutral it's a neutral force it's a neutralizing force. So as we've done in that flow of the Vesica Pisces energy, a neutralizing energy, a neutralizing um, frequency that brings us back into harmony, into our center. So another way to look at the energy of unconditional love and that neutralizing force is it transcends or goes beyond duality. So we saw the two, we had the two concentric rings forming that Vesica Pisces um, beautiful seed of creation um, symbol and when you have uh, we live in a realm of duality on this planet as we know we have male and female light and dark right and wrong good and bad up and down in and out uh, but the energy of this golden mean ratio brings us into a state of neutrality where we're bridging in consciousness chaos and creation and all of those dual points we bring them together and we harmonize them so they work together 
And this is what we're being asked to do as a humanity, work together. It isn't about a war of light and dark. It's about putting our focus on the shadow so we can heal it, knowing what is hidden or unknown, so we can bring it into the known, so that we can alchemize it and so that we can heal it. And we all have both parts. It's like the yin and the yang. We all have a, a shadow side. And the potential for great destruction and, and actually great evil exists within every single human being, but it's always a choice. And we all have a light side. And, you know, we have a beautiful angelic divine side. And it always is a choice as to which one you're operating from. Now, I want to make a point here because I've had, um, I had some comments come through on the YouTube channel about my my logo, about my logos and the shape of my logos. Um, and I have yeah, a couple of logos. So there's the Alexandra Wenman Show logo, which is actually taken from my Precious Wisdom Alchemy logo. And it's meant to look like my initials, AW, um, but also like a gold crown. And to me, it is a symbol of sovereignty. It's meant to represent as above, so below, as within, so without. And it is, uh, the, the shape of the logo is based on the golden mean and it is a, a symbol which to me represents divine unconditional love. It's a neutral, uh, it's a neutral symbol. But as Carl Jung told us, okay, if you look up what Carl Jung said about symbols, what he wrote about symbols was that a sign is different to a symbol in that a sign is something we know about, like a stop sign. We know what a stop sign means, um, like the Coca-Cola brand. You, you will see that. You know that that means, you know, a, a sugary, not very, <laughs> not very healthy drink. Um, it's like a household sign, you know, all kinds of signs. Stop, go, you know, we know what a traffic light means. But a symbol is something that is has multiple meanings or that you don't necessarily know what it means or can have hidden meaning or um, usually I see symbols as a gateway into higher consciousness or other consciousness and there is a symbol which I think people have been alluding to in my logo which is the Masonic square and compass symbol which is basically looks a bit like a, a capital A but it's like a, a a point going up and a point going down. I've written extensively about the symbolism of the golden mean and I actually mentioned my logos in the book so if you are interested in reading more about symbolism and actually how it has been misused, uh, it has been misused, a lot of symbolism has been used against us and I'm not going to say anything about any secret societies because I'm not part of any secret societies and I don't really know that much about, well, I do know a lot about how they use their symbols, but I'm not going to go on a, a rabbit hole down here. But just to say that my use of the golden mean in my logo is all about accessing our divinity, accessing our sovereignty, and yeah, they're gateways to consciousness. If a symbol brings up fear in you because the the square and compass is actually part of a bigger symbol and many of you will know that symbol to be the pentagram which is the five pointed star and the pentagram is actually the symbol for the divine human two arms two legs head it's us it's it's the human being and in the witchcraft traditions it is a powerful symbol of protection the golden dawn have a uh, a, a ritual called the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, which is actually one of the most powerful protection rituals you can do. It calls on um, multiple archangels around you and the symbolism of the pentagram, which essentially is all of the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit or ether. So all of these are patterns of nature. They're part of nature. They're inherent in us. They're available to us all the time. There's nothing negative or demonic in the symbols themselves. However, symbols, because they are neutral, are also encodable. And many symbols have been used against us. And one of them is the pentagram. You may see uh, sometimes the pentagram is inverted or upside down with the, the, the central point pointing down. It's not always negative just because it's pointing down. It depends on the person's intention that has used it. But this is where the pentagram has had a bad rap. And we know that there's been an 
inquisition against uh, the mystics and the healers for a very, very long time and the witch trials and, and inquisitions and all of those kinds of things. But essentially, if, if you see a symbol and it causes you to feel discomfort or uh, it brings up something in you, it's likely that it's shining a light on something within you that you need to go and clear. So you may have had past life associations with uh, secret societies, or you may have indeed have misused symbolism in your own history, in your own past lives, or you, you may just have a knowledge of it, or the symbol might be helping to heal something in you. So it might be bringing something from your subconscious into your consciousness. And indeed, when I do healing work, I do work with symbols in a neutral, unconditionally loving capacity to shine a light on what needs to be revealed because they will bring the unknown and make it known. So symbols effectively are like a question mark. You know, anytime you, you kind of go, but what does it mean? But why is that there? What is that doing? It piques your curiosity and then that, that really sparks an expansion in consciousness. And I've been on so many rabbit holes because I did start channeling a lot of symbols going back to 2011, 2012, when I started channeling my precious wisdom healing system, I was given a sequence of symbols. And one of them was actually a similar symbol to the, the Masonic square and compass. But the idea behind um, the sequence of symbols, anything like Reiki, it was an attunement. Um, and what the higher galactic councils showed me was how to claim the symbols back for their rightful use. And we're going right back into Atlantean times here because a lot of these symbols are part of our natural, um, our, our divine birthright to be able to use them. They are keys, they are tools to healing, they're tools to ascension. A lot of them are light language symbols. You'll be, see like a lot of people bringing through light language and symbols and things that look like a foreign language. Um, runes are a, a type of symbolism that have been used for a long time coming from the Norse and the Celtic mythologies. So we have symbols everywhere all the time, every day. And one of the ways that symbols have been misused in simple daily waking life is through advertising, is to get us to buy things that we might not necessarily otherwise want, but we're being programmed all the time. I do teach courses in this stuff. I talk about this stuff all the time. My Precious Wisdom Alchemy is a process that does help to neutralize anything that shouldn't be in your energy field, undo any programming, and bring you back into divine alignment, into alignment with your sovereignty and your own divine will and authority. And it was a tool that was given to me around 2011 and 2012, and I was told it was it is for the ascension. And uh, I feel like we're going to be needing this <laughs> a lot more as we go into the future. So that said... On a segue, coming back to the body, coming back to the body. And uh, you can try this for yourself. So uh, an, another kind of a, a symbol that we could work with, you could work with any of the platonic solids, what we know to be the platonic solids, because they're all the sacred geometry that's based in the divine proportion, the Fibonacci, the golden ratio. Um, so you could use a cube just a cube but I always tilt the cube so that there's a point so it's like an open cube not a kind of closed cube but you could use a cube it's very angelic very very firm and foundational I like to use the octahedron and put a big diamond in my energy field but you can practice with this it, it doesn't even have to be a 3d diamond um, you could use a, a, a pentagram um, or a, pen, sorry, a pentagon, which looks a bit like a, a five-sided diamond, but any of the platonic solids, if you just imagine that you're sitting inside a cube or a diamond or one of the platonic solids, a dodecahedron, icosahedron, um, or a star tetrahedron, or a pyramid, uh, just start to see how your energy field feels. I'm going to use the octahedron or diamond because that's my, my main one. I love working with the diamond shield. And you can just set the intention that anything that shouldn't be in your space at this time is cleared. It's a really simple way of clearing your energy field. And then just tune into your physical body and tune into any sensations that you've had in your physical body. And as you just sit within the shape, 
it'll naturally, as you put your attention on it and you set the intention to neutralize anything that shouldn't be in your space at this time, it will automatically start to neutralize, clear and heal your energy field and it will strengthen your vibration. You can use the masculine symbol or you could use the, um, the, the almond shape, the vesica Pisces, that's the feminine version. You see that replicated in the flower of life symbol. But any of these symbols based in sacred geometry, the golden mean, are very, very simple and powerful tools to neutralize and heal and strengthen our energy field. And they've actually done uh, kinesiology tests on this. Anytime you're wearing sacred geometry, I don't have anything on right now that has sacred geometry, do I? Um, if, if you muscle test when you're wearing sacred geometry jewelry or when you're not, your your muscle test is likely to be really strong with it on and it actually does strengthen your, your energy field. But there are a lot of people you know, selling jewellery and creating fancy crystals and neutralising gadgets that cost an arm and a leg these days. They cost a fortune and you don't need to have tons of money to do this stuff. Everything we need, I believe, is within our own consciousness. You know, we can even encode flower essences, homeopathic remedies direct from our divine self and I work with consciousness encoding all the time but this is a really simple process just to neutralize anything coming into your energy field that will help to activate your physical body and your etheric body and your astral body's self-healing process and all of us have the ability to self-heal you know, and I can't make promises. We're all different depending on what you're dealing with. But I do know that there have also been scientific studies that prove that our belief in healing actually is the main thing that allows us to heal. They've done placebo studies and all kinds of things. If you look at the epigenetics work of Bruce Lipton, you'll see that there's been plenty of evidence to suggest that actually believing in your ability to heal is the thing that helps you heal. So on that note, I'm just going to see if there's any further guidance coming through from the body consciousness and the teams. The message here is just cherish your physical body however you see fit. Um, if that means changing your diet, that's wonderful. But again, they're saying the difference between responsibility and blame and shame. So if you're changing your diet out of a feeling of guilt or fear, as in, oh my God, I've got to change my diet because if I eat all, all these foods that I love, then it's going to make me sick and da 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 then you're going to amplify the fear factor. So if, for example, you do have allergies or intolerances and your body's saying, please change your diet, do it with joy. If you change your diet with joy in your heart and a need to feel healthier and overall well-being and you're doing it with a sense of um, sustenance, nourishment, happiness, your perception is the thing that is important here. If you want to go out and eat a load of chocolate, do it with joy in your heart and no guilt and no shame. That's This is the key. It's all in our perception. So, yes, the difference between blame and shame. And again, back to Mother Earth, she doesn't want us feeling any shame or going into self-blame or feeling like, oh, my God, what have I done to poor Mother Earth? The more we put our focus and our attention on, you know, how may I serve and how can I do it with joy? And the more we it's like she's saying the more we jump for joy at being on the earth and the more we connect to the blessing of being here and the more gratitude we hold, the more we are helping to feed that energetically back into the earth in a bigger way. And then we do help to shift the perspective for the all as well. Now, you might feel like, well, there's little me and I'm doing my recycling and I'm taking responsibility but I can't do anything about the big factories in China, for example, or, you know, I can't do anything about big corporates that are spewing out loads of stuff into the ocean. Our mindset and our collective mindset makes a massive difference. 
And even if you feel like you're you're just one little drop in the ocean of consciousness, you are still a drop and you still have a ripple out effect. Put your focus on what is right and good and beautiful in this world and see the blessings unfolding. And when you look at what's happening in the ascension, instead of going, oh my God, look at everything that's being disrupted, what's going to happen next, the energy's damn weird right now. And I, and I will say the energy has been very, very weird. But instead of focusing on, oh God, what's going to happen next, and it's quite scary, and it's really unnerving, and we don't know what's going on, if we see the unknown as scary, then that is what we'll get. But if we put our focus on what's happening, and we say to ourselves, this is happening for us. It's not happening to us. It's happening for us. And all of this is part of the great shift in consciousness. And ultimately, it's going to be a blessing. Then we do help to steer the whole ship in the right direction. That is not being naive. It's being positive. I've been accused of being naive many a time. But I can tell you right now, I've had my own evidence of what positive thinking does and what the power of... Um, positive thought and perception creates in your own life. And any time I've let myself drop the ball on that, that's when the downward spiral comes in. And I'm human, so I'm guilty of doing it too, but I have to bring myself back to my center. The other thing I used to get accused of quite a lot of the time was sitting on the fence, but I'm Libra. So bringing the two polarities together and then opening to the truth, coming into neutral before making a judgment call or a decision is something I've always worked with and it has never steered me wrong. Because again, we can go down rabbit holes of anger and injustice and, you know, and then we can find ourselves misusing our anger. And there is such a thing as clean anger. I'm not saying we shouldn't use our anger. Sometimes if the fight comes to your door and you need to stand up for yourself, anger is when used cleanly with love and good intention is actually a very, very powerful force and part of love energy. But coming into neutral and observing things from all sides is a really, really healthy practice. And it's the same with our bodies. What is my body really showing me? And it, it's interesting as we come full circle, you know, back to that sensation in my base chakra I was initially like oh that feels really uncomfortable what's going on in my body and then when I realized what it was it was actually a gift and it was an energetic gift of the reminder that I have within myself the ability to heal and strengthen my energy field at any any time a final example of this that I did put a video up uh, quite a few years ago I think it was around 2019 uh, 2018, 2019, when they first switched on the 5G in my area. And I did share a process to help neutralize it. Um, when they first switched on the 5G in my area, I felt it in my body and it literally felt like I was being electrocuted from within my own skin. And I sat up and did a similar process to this. I did my precious wisdom alchemy. Um, after a couple of weeks of thinking like, I can't go near my computer, I can't be near my phone, I thought I was going to have to live in a Faraday cage for the rest of my life. I started doing working with the sacred geometry and just doing my precious wisdom process over and over and over again to neutralize the effects of the 5G in my body and it actually worked. And I sat up one night doing it over and over again till about 2 o'clock in the morning and I've never had a problem with it ever since. So just another reminder, we are very, very, very powerful beings. And remember that your body itself is based on sacred geometry. You're, you are the patterns of nature. Therefore, you are also programmable. Your body is programmable. And I think, you know, when it comes to advertising and that vesica Pisces shape, I mean, Chanel, anyone, the double Cs? There's a lot of it. If you see car, um, the badges on cars, the branding of cars, they use that, that, that geometry all the time. But, you know, you can neutralize it. You just ask for it to be neutralized and um, you ask your higher self not to take in the effects of any subliminal programming that's going on around you. So for those of you who have been a bit interested in my logo, then that's, that is basically all it is, unconditional love and my initials. <laughs> so I've just pulled a couple of cards and I feel intuitively guided to choose a new deck that's come out 
It's not my deck, um, but because we're working with the body consciousness and essentially earth energies, I thought I would pull a couple of cards from the beautiful Pride of Dragons Oracle. And this is by a lovely guy called Angelo Thomas. He's actually um, he's actually published um, by ooh, Bear and Company. I've just dropped the cards. Um, and they are an imprint of Inner Traditions. So my publisher, uh, Fintorn Press, is an imprint of Inner Traditions as well. Um, I just want to show you the back of the cards here. They're so lovely, these cards. And I love dragons. I love, I find that, you know, I know that angels are powerful. Sometimes dragons come in with an energy that just gets straight in there to the root of it. There's no messing around here. Um, so they're very potent. And the illustrations by Sonia Hedger are absolutely gorgeous too. There's a beautiful simplicity in these cards. And I've pulled um, six cards, interestingly. And the first one is the hatching. So we've got the egg. So this reminds me of that Vesica Pisces shape, you know, renewing our energy. What is being birthed from the earth? What do we want to birth? Where are we putting our perception? What are you hatching? You know, are you focusing on everything that's going wrong or are you expecting the best? Are you putting your focus on what is good? Focus on um, what you want to create rather than what you want to resist, what you resist persists. I'm always reminded these days, yes, we clear energy and we neutralize and we alchemize and, and we have a, a job to do, many of us light workers. But what do we want to create and what do we want to manifest for ourselves? And then we have the Gaian star. You can't really see because my light's really bright. The Gaian star, pride of the archangels, um, dragon. And I love, look at the diamond. This is so on point. This is pretty much what we just did. So bringing the diamond down through the energy field. Um, what codes of light are you sharing with Mother Earth and is she sharing with you and remembering that you're part of that beautiful oneness, that you're here to bring wisdom and knowledge and the Gaian star, beautiful Gaia. Love that lovely green dragon. Then the next one is You Determined. Love this dude. He's cool. You determine number 10 adds up to one. Pride of the earthly. I kind of get a real strong warrior spirit energy with this card. It's like I'm not budging. You know, I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to do it for the good of the all. You know, I'm standing in my integrity. I'm standing for justice and sovereignty. And I love that the, this bit on his, he, it's like he's got a golden mohawk. It's very solar there. So it's like basking in the sun of your creations I also you know I would call him a he but now I'm looking closer at this card it's like a powerful mother energy it's like you come near my brood and I'm gonna trample you so it's like defending our earth um, and then these ones this is the next three so among the stars so what dreams what what visions are you bringing in? You know, and I am often find myself off amongst the stars or off amongst the fairies, but another a remembrance to, to ground what you're visioning and to embody what you're teaching. So we can have all the knowledge in the world. We can, we can, you know, we can have all kinds of insights, but if we're not actually walking our talk and embody it, embodying it, then what is the point? Next one. 44, there we go. Sword of Deliverance, Clearing of Obstacles. I really feel that this year in the, the astrology and everything going on this year. We've had such heavy energy the last few years and it does feel like we're being given a, a bit of a, 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 a boost. And my last video that I did, I was talking about that slingshot of creation that, that all the magic that had built up was acting like a slingshot. And I do feel like that's part of the sword of deliverance. It's like the arrow, what are we aiming for? And then finally the last card, which is absolutely uh, so similar to what we just did in that process is godly foundations. So we're anchoring in our godly foundations on the earth, heaven to earth, and again, that's duality coming together in the oneness, that the human being is the divine bridge between heaven and earth. You know, those of us that were raised um, Catholic 
we're told that heaven was up there and hell was down there. And I'm like, that's not hell. That's mama earth. We don't do that. No, heaven and hell are in your perception and in your perspective. We create heaven or hell, you know, with our own experience and we have the power to change that. So what godly heavenly foundations are you going to anchor on the earth through your perception? And just like I said, with symbols, they're neutral. Everything that you look at is neutral. Um, I will share a final practice. I know this video is going on, but I will share a final practice that I do uh, on a daily basis. And I usually do it at 11, 11, 12, 12, or whenever I see number sequences or double numbers. And I tend to just look, I look and I observe with the eyes of an artist. So whenever I see 11, 11, I just look around me and I look at just the 3D life, the 3D experience. And whatever I put my focus on, it might be a beautiful sunset or a view, depending on where I am in the world, but it could be a dirty London street with a load of garbage cans, you know, like it could be a, a lot of rubbish. But I just, instead of judging it, instead of going, oh, this is, this is a dirty neighborhood or that's a grubby street or look at that, all that rubbish or look at that beautiful sunset, how amazing. Instead of putting any judgment on the scene in front of me, I sit back and I look at it as light and shadow, just the interplay of light and shadow, as though you were an artist. If you were going to sketch it, you wouldn't be judging it. You would literally just be looking at where to shade and where to colour and, and you'd look at it, you know, in a, in a kind of a neutral fashion. And that's what I try to do. And then when I do that and I look around me and I see that, I then am able to see the beauty and, and see the magic in the mundane. And I just say to myself, I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky. I'm so grateful. Thank you, universe, for letting me live in this beautiful world. And um, look at all the, the, the magic and the beauty around me. And then we're able to change the neural pathways in our brain and really see the gift where we thought there was, you know, just yuck. You know, it, it's finding finding the uh, the gold within the um the grot <laughs> anyway um that's just a thought to leave you with if you do that at 11 11 every day you could even set an alarm on your phone and do that at 11 11 every day and um it does build up over time it really does help you to start to have a much better mindset and similarly in the sensations in your physical body because when we feel stressed up here the body will feel stressed as well so as above so below as below so above so you could start with the sensations in the body and do that neutralizing process or you could choose to do it the other way around and neutralize your thoughts and let that filter through to your beautiful body and by the way we're neutralizing we're anchoring heaven upon the earth so a bit, a bit of a practical video today, but hopefully that has given a little bit more food for thought and a bit of a process for you to work with. So, so simple, sitting in a platonic solid, you could light it up with gold or white light or whatever color you want, or you could just see it as the clear light of the divine and neutral, and just with the intention to neutralize anything that shouldn't be in your energy field. And talk to your body, listen to your body. What do you need, body? What would you like, body? What would you enjoy today, body? So on that note, I'm going to go make a nice cup of tea and um, have a lovely, lovely day. For those of you who are, are around today, when I film this video is the 4th of March 2024. If there is anyone in the London area this Saturday, the 9th of March, I'm going to be at Watkins Books doing a little book signing and a meet and greet and um, that will be from midday at Watkins Books in Cecil Court, Leicester Square, London this Saturday the 9th of March. Please come along and say hello if you're in the area. It's not that often I get to see people in person. I do a lot of stuff online these days so it'll be really lovely. Come and have a hug. I'm probably going to pull some cards and um, yeah, if you already have the book or the cards, bring them along and I'm happy to sign them for you. And, and yeah, just come and have a jolly and say hello. It's a lovely bookshop. It's one of the oldest um, magical bookshops in London. I think Atlantis Books is the other one, another one of my favourite bookshops in London. And um, I hope to see you there. I'm also hoping to have a few more courses and workshops and things available for you this year. 
And oh, on another note, I've also launched an online magazine. It is called Alchemistic, and you can find it at alchemistic.substack.com. I'll put the links below. If you are a writer and you would love to have an article published, I'm also taking submissions and I'm running some awards. There's a there's an awards competition going on at the moment. Please feel free to nominate yourselves or any other experts or podcasters or healers or authors. Uh, there's a whole list of uh, nominations on the form. Please feel free to nominate and um, we'll be going to a public vote in uh, probably about a month's time I think but um, I'd love to see your submissions for your favorite authors spiritual healers podcasters and um, and all the rest and if you're an expert or healer yourself please do nominate yourselves thank you so so much for watching and um, bless your beautiful bodies and thank you body consciousness for the lovely reminder lovely grounding video today lots of love and speak soon mm -hmm.